Hi, Dragana, and uh, thank you for joining me today. Um, on behalf of our clients, I have a few things I would like to ask you about the tech historian. Hi, Jan. Okay, let's do it. Good. So every time, or well, not every time, but often when I talk with uh, with clients and we, the talk is, uh, we, we get talking about the trend tool, which is some, something everybody that works with the SCADA system, they have some form of trend tool. They look at historical data and they always worried how difficult it is to get working with the with, with looking at the historical data in Ignition. And I claim that it is kind of out, out of the box uh, solution. So let's put that to the test. Yes, yeah, sure. So question number one they have is, um, how do I actually get started? Um, where, where does the data come from? Okay, so uh, if we want to see data in a trend tool, the first step would be uh, the data itself. So if we say that we have uh, successfully connected tags in Ignition, the next step from there would be to uh, enable Tag Historia. And now I will walk you through that. Okay, great. Let me see that, how that works. Okay, so here I have the Ignition uh, Designer, mm -hmm. which is the tool in place where we basically design every Ignition project. Mm -hmm. And here, first of all, we are starting most cases with UDT, mm -hmm. which is a user-defined type or a tag structure from where tag instances inherit from. So here I have defined uh, UDT, which I call station, and has a tag definition for humidity and temperature. And then under the Tags section, I have three folders, which basically represent my uh, tag instances. So let's say that I would like to store historical data in a, a school database for all of these tag instances. So um, because all of these tags basically inherit from uh, the UDT, the only place where I need to enable tag historian is only in the Unity, and from there, all tags will basically uh, have Tag Historian enabled. So let's see how we basically uh, enable Tag Historian. I will navigate to the Unity, mm -hmm. and here I have the Unity definition editor where I can see that I have created some tag definition for humidity and temperature. And let's take the humidity and I will go below the history section. And here I can see that I have already turned on the tag historian. And here under the storage provider, I have set a database connection. And basically this means that uh, Ignition automatically created all needed tags and relations into the chosen database so that when I do this and basically enable the tag historian, all of the data from the tags will be automatically stored into uh, the, the database I have chosen here. So that would be it. And that's how we basically have the historical data. So, so essentially what you're saying is all, all there is to it is to, to set the uh, historical data to true and, and that's it. Yes, and chose the right database connection. And that would be it. That's pretty awesome. Um, so I, you mentioned the uh, SQL database. So what, what kind of databases can I use for, for historical data? What kind of databases can I connect to Ignition? Yes. So because the historical data is configured uh, from Ignition, that entirely depends on Ignition and the database connections that can be done in Ignition. And here we are talking about SQL databases, but more specifically, Ignition supports um, the Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, Postgres, and MySQL uh, drivers. Okay. So that gives us uh, some, uh, some variety to work with. Yes. Good. 
Then let's circle back to something else you mentioned. You talked about several times the database connection. Uh, what does that mean and, and what is that? Yes, sure. So for connecting uh, to a, a database, I will need to navigate to the Ignition Gateway, which I will show you right in a second. Okay, so here I have the Ignition Gateway, which is the primary software service that drives everything in Ignition. It's a single application that runs as a web server and we can access it to a web browser. So mm -hmm. after I have been authorized, I can open this page and I can navigate to the config, to the database and then database connections uh, section. And basically I can click on the create new database connection. And when doing that, I get all of these uh, options, which is all, all sorts of uh, drivers uh, for my uh, database connection that I wanna uh, make. And for this example, let's just choose Microsoft SQL Server. And when doing this, uh, basically, I have all sorts of uh, settings that I need to fill. And of course, the most important part is the connecting URI and the username, passwords, the database name. And basically, uh, after I'm doing this, I will just need to uh, enable Tag Historian and choose the database uh, connection. And after that, uh, Ignition will automatically create all native tables for storing the historical data. So that's it. Okay, thank you very much. So now we have established what kind of database we can work with. You have shown how to enable the tag history on the tags and, uh, and you have also shown how the database connection works in the Ignition Gateway. So by now we uh, should actually have uh, a situation where we collect and store data historically in, in the database. So now comes the next natural question. Uh, when we claim that it's an out-of-the-box solution, um, what kind of tool do you have in Ignition to, uh, to give uh, trends and show trends and make analysis of historical data? Okay, so we basically do have out-of-the-box uh, solutions for showing trends uh, in data, and that is the power chart component in perspective. And now I will share that one. Okay, so this is basically the power chart component that allows us to transform the real time and historical data into dynamic charts and graphs. And uh, basically, uh, we can, with drag and drop tool, we can easily create uh, chart pens and uh, view the data trends. So That's, first of all, and that is a standard uh, tool in Ignition. Yes, everything you see currently is basically built in features for the component. Okay. Yes, so uh, mainly it covers uh, three sections. So first of all, we have the browser where we can basically browse the native tags. And for example, uh, let's say I wanna, I wanna view data for humidity and I will add that tag into the chart where I immediately see results. And uh, here below, I have uh, the pen control where I can manipulate with the pens. And I have the global settings for adding objects into the chart as adding access, pens, plots, and adjusting the columns for showing the aggregate uh, values. Okay, so let's let's have a deeper look into that because that means that uh, as a user, I actually have some built-in features uh, where I can, let's call it, manipulate data. Is that correctly understood? Yes, that's true. So I will now walk you through the built-in interactions that can be made with the power chart. Mm -hmm. And once again, everything you currently see uh, is a built-in feature. So uh, here, as I have said, we have the browser where we can basically select uh, and find the needed text for which we want to create a chart pen. And after doing that, the next step would be the date range. 
So uh, here I have two options and two sections, mm -hmm. which is the real time and historical. So the real time section is basically if we want to see the most uh, recent data based on the chosen time frame. And then we have the historical one, when based on a start time and end time, we can view uh, the data. So let's say that I have chosen this start and end date point. And in the chart, we load, we'll load the data based on the, that start and ending point. Mm -hmm. Of course, I can uh, zoom in, I can zoom out, and I can then reset the zoom to default. Then the next uh, step and option we have here is like trace. So on the chart, I can basically add uh, a vertical line, uh, which shows an interpolated value for each and every pen available on the chart. Mm -hmm. Then the next step I can do is basically select a range of the data, or what we say is create a a brush, which automatically adds a section here, which is some aggregate uh, summaries as first value, last value, average value, minimum, maximum, and so on. I can, of course, create uh, multiple brushes, and that will create multiple aggregate uh, summaries that I want to view. And of course, with clicking on the delete button, I can delete those. Now let's move to annotations. So uh, whenever I click uh, near a line, data point or trend, I can basically add annotation. So let's say the annotation would be this is a test. That would make good sense, yes. Yeah, and uh, this annotation will be uh, automatically saved into the database. And uh, the database that will be used, it's basically the same database that we are storing the historical data. Mm -hmm. But the table for storing the annotations will be automatically uh, created by Ignition. So we don't need to do anything. Just okay. create annotations as needed. Yeah. And of course, as I'm hovering over the annotation, I can edit it or I can just simply remove it. Now let's move to the global settings. So uh, this section right here allows us to add new axes, pens, plots, or adjust the columns that we can see under the pen control section. So let's just create an additional plot. And here I have multiple settings that I can adjust, but I will just leave that by default. Mm -hmm. And now let's uh, add uh, the temperature values under the section two folder. And here pops up uh, like a, a window, which basically uh, gives me uh, the opportunity to choose the plot I want. And I will basically choose the one I have just created. And when clicking add, I have uh, two plots and the three pens that I have uh, created. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Yes, it is. Yeah. So I, I think you have uh, you have demonstrated more than convincingly that uh, there are a number of uh, out of the box features coming uh, along the uh, built in uh, power chart in, in Ignition. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. One of the uh, one of the questions that we get all the time from users of Ignition is uh, how can individual or different types of users use the, the trend tool? Uh, that's very interesting because, well, with many different roles in a, in a company, it's natural that one size fits all is just not good enough. It's not going to cut it. So what, what can you do, Dagana? Can, uh, can we customize this as per user or can they do that themselves? How does it work? Yes, so because the power chart is basically a perspective component and perspective uh, uses sessions, that means that everything depends on a session. So a perspective session is an instance of a project running on the web browser or a mobile app. 
and um, different sessions mean that the users can use the power chart differently and um, choose settings individually and doing that of course uh, in the in the runtime so uh, because everything lives uh, within a session uh, that means that the chosen uh, settings are per, per session but uh, we can actually add uh, a solution on that and include authorization. And later on, we can, of course, uh, involve uh, uh, saving the settings in a database. So whenever a user returns to the power chart, uh, they can view the lastly saved configuration they made on the power chart. Okay, so that means if I have like a, for example, a control room in a factory uh, with the let's say four different uh, types of operators and they have different roles and different tasks, they could uh, make their own kind of version of, of the trend tool uh, and, and save that for when they return to their shift uh, next day or whenever. Yes, that's exactly. So basically we're doing everything per user. So whatever they do is individually and differently. And it will be stored so that when they log out and leave for, for the shift, then it's not all lost and gone. Exactly, yeah. yeah. They, they will be happy to hear that. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> Good. Good. So let's let's circle back to, I think the, the final question, uh, Darkner, uh, one thing I hear all the time, and, and you also know that this is an issue. I heard it actually the last time, uh, uh, latest time was uh, yesterday afternoon about performance of all of this, uh, because people uh, tend to say, yeah, yeah, that's, that's all fine and, and dandy. Um, but what happens when we store millions and millions of, uh, of data in, in the database? So they look at me, you know, like very, Worried in a, in a way, say, how far back in time can we actually go? How far back in time does this tool work? Yeah. Yes, so that depends entirely on the data. We can show data in the power chart from the very beginning, we have historical data in the database. So that means that uh, from the very moment we have uh, data in the uh, database, we can show that and go back in time into the power chart. And now uh, the second thing is the response time. So uh, that uh, basically depends on the amount uh, of data. If we chose um, bigger period of time, that means bigger amount of tape of, of data and that means that we will have a longer response time and then the second uh, thing is uh, the the uh, the time that we are storing data so uh, if we are storing data every second that means that we will have much more uh, data than storing the data on a change so because there are many dependencies on the response time, we do have uh, best practices for optimizing the solution. And in best cases that the users can be basically, um, it could be possible for users to see their results immediately. And uh, one of our best practices is storing data on a change, which will mean that we will uh, minimize the amount of data stored in the database, but we will have all crucial information. Yeah, I, I know you have made a, a actually a very comprehensive video on how to work with uh, and think about storing historical data. And I think it would make sense to link to that one and, and leave the details there. Um, yeah. For now, Dragan, I think this is this is super cool. I, I love this tool. I uh, essentially I'm very enthusiastic about Ignition. And thank you very much for explaining all of this. Makes perfectly sense. Uh, 